and we've heard quite a bit lately about the rollout of the 5G or 5th generation network, but we don't hear much about the health effects of the electromagnetic fields of the 5G network, which is more powerful than ever. 5G mobile technology, which will affect many aspects of our lives, will be rolled out in December, Vodafone announced today. So what does the G stand for? Simply, generation. Let's take a look back now at how technology has changed through the years. Remember these? Yes, dubbed bricks. They brought in the first generation of wireless technology in the 1980s. Analog and supported voice calls only. It turned digital in the early 90s with 2G, the first major upgrade introducing texting and basic picture messages. 3G in the late 90s ushered in much faster speeds and many things we now take for granted like web browsing, email, video calling and the term smartphone. The first iPhone debuting at the end of the 3G period in 2007. 4G, the current standard, that came in in 2008, enhancing mobile web access like online gaming, HD mobile TV and 3D, plus video conferencing. Here's Laura James again with how 5G will really up the game. Hundreds of birds have fallen from the sky in The Hague, the Netherlands, during a 5G experiment to see how large the range was and whether the new wireless technology would cause any harm in the local area. News of the adverse effects suffered by the starlings was slow to break as initially the birds died in small numbers during the first wave of experiments. However, when a further 150 birds suddenly died at the same time, falling into a public park, people began to take notice and investigate. What caused the death of 297 birds in a park in The Hague? Now, if you look around the park, you might have seen what is on the corner of the roof across the street from where they died. A new 5G mask where they had done a test at almost the exact same time as the birds fell from the sky. Now, according to reports, nearby ducks seem to react oddly as well. They, at the same time, put their heads underwater to escape the radiation, while others flew away, landing on the street or in the canal. Now, this information that I'm giving you now comes from a local's Facebook page in that area. In the meantime, back on October 30th, 2018, we received some more information. The birds that fell massively dead would be the victims of an experiment performed on those days in The Hague, where RF radiation was tested with a peak frequency of 7.40 gigahertz. This information comes from one source and should still be confirmed if possible. They go on to say it is not clear at this moment whether tests from 5G transmission masts have been carried out again, but so far everything points in the direction of 5G as the most probable cause. Now, the Dutch Food and Consumer Product Safety Authority, or the NVWA, is having a number of birds examined in the laboratory. Parts of the park are blocked and dogs are no longer allowed to be let out. The dead birds are always cleaned up as quickly as possible. Yet it is a crazy scene. Council member Robert Baker of the Party for the Animals had the feeling of being on a crime scene. The fact that so many birds fall from the sky at this location must have a cause and must be investigated. Now there's a link to this information below this video go take a look at it for yourselves the truth about the safety of 5g is that it's not safe and corporations are being allowed to roll out the new technology before they are sure about its effects on humans the rollout of 5g technology is a massive health experiment that will have disastrous consequences for the human race according to the first major university study into the controversial wireless service in a coalition of 200 leading scientists and doctors are calling for an urgent stop to the rollout. 5G technology is a very real danger, warns Dr. Moskowitz, a public health professor at the University of California. The development of 5G or fifth generation cellular technology constitutes a massive experiment on the health of all species, he said. With the death of the birds in the Netherlands, we are already starting to see the results of 5G technology. What do you think? Could this new 5G technology 
be deadly to humans or cause some sort of physical damage to humans. As we've been telling you on the show, 5G wireless technology is on the way and it promises to bring faster download speeds and better connectivity for all of your devices. But is there more for this story? Many in the scientific community are sounding the alarm, saying we need to know more about what 5G is and what the increased electromagnetic radiation may be doing to our bodies. Now, according to our next guest, EMF exposure can lead to neurological effects, hormonal effects, and even lower fertility. Joining us now is a Dr. Martin Paul, Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry and Basic Medical Sciences at Washington State University. Thanks for joining us, Doctor. Delighted to be here. Okay, Dr. Paul, you anchored, uh, you authored a paper on the harms of electric magnetic fields of EMFs, which you then have used to lobby various government organizations, including the European Union. You have even called this latest 5G rollout insane. So we're going from a long way from having all of the electromagnetic fields from power lines in neighborhoods. Now we're talking about not only the, the one, two, three, four, but 5G rollout. Why do you feel so strongly that this is a health risk? Well, it's, first of all, you have to know that we know that the other EMFs that we're exposed to are already known to be health risks. And, uh, and basically that 5G, because of the frequency that's going to be used and because of the extraordinarily high pulsation levels that will be used, uh, is uh, a much bigger threat to our health than the things that we already have, which are very substantial threats to our health. Well, when those other parts are coming, when they were rolling out 4G, when they were rolling out even 3G, did you have obviously these same concerns and what is the different level? I mean, you've, ex you've argued that the existing 2G, 3G, 4G radiation has already been scientifically linked with many forms of illnesses, including cancer. So do you feel even more, how much more of a danger do you feel like 5G is going to be? I think it's going to be massive, but you have to look, first of all, uh, we're not just talking about the intensity. We're talking about the frequency and the very high level of pulsations. There's a huge literature which shows that pulsed EMFs, EMFs that pulse up and down very rapidly, are in most cases much more biologically active than our non-pulsed EMFs. And, uh, and, and in general, every single wireless communication device communicates via pulsations, but the industry completely ignores this issue. And when you get up to 5G with the extraordinary high levels of pulsation, it's absolutely, it, it, it's absolutely essential that we not ignore it. And, and uh, the problem with, five, with, with, uh, with, um, with 5G is that they're planning to put out tens of millions of these antennae all over the place without doing one single biological safety test. And that's why I said I thought this was totally insane. Well, that's the question. If these technologies pose such a grave health risk as, as detailed in all of your research, then why do you think it's being promoted so aggressively, even just recently? Are you implying possibly that we, the consumers, are the guinea pigs since they haven't really done tests to see the effects in a smaller setting? Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's not an implication. It's a statement. We are. Yes. Okay, so we are. So here's my question for you. What can we do, whether it be 5G or right now, what is, what is one of the things that you tell those that are closest to your family and friends that they can do to, if, is there anything they can do to help protect themselves from these radiation waves that we're already experiencing? Well, there are many things you can do to make things better. Uh, the problem is, of course, it gets harder and harder to do them as we introduce more devices and more dangerous devices. So you can, uh, you can put, you, you can put uh, shielding in your homes, for example. You can uh, take Wi-Fi out of your homes. You can um, even shield your body, although, you know, people talk about tin hats and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, that, there, there is shielding that can be at least somewhat useful. And, uh, but ba and basically, you can measure the intensities that you're exposed to and try to keep yourself in, into lower intensity fields. The problem is that intensity as such is only one measure. And there are all these other things that are important, including, as I said before, the pulsations and, and the frequencies. Uh, they all have very important uh, um, roles here. Uh, and let me just say one other thing. It's very, very difficult right now to measure 5G. 
because the meters that that uh, have been put out to, uh, to to measure them cost tens of thousands of dollars. You know, your ordinary meter won't measure them. Well, are there any companies like we've seen Apple has some reluctance and hesitation uh, with 5G technology? Do you see any other tech companies kind of actually listening to your study or listening to studies like it and heeding that and trying to at least work with and find a solution that will be acceptable amongst the community and, and make it a safer type of product? Uh, I, you know, I think that some countries have been responding better than the U.S. Uh, but no place is good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some companies have been better than others, but none of them are good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a long way to go. There, there have been, uh, by the way, patents taken out on devices that are, are apparently safer than the ones that we're using, but nobody's actually using those patents to produce uh, commercial products. So there, there are tremendous things that can be done, but we're simply not doing them. And we're not only not doing them, but we're running as fast as we can in exactly the wrong direction. The generation of wireless technology, or 5G, as last night we talked about how the fifth generation of wireless technology, or 5G, as it's being rolled out worldwide without safety testing. Let me say that again, without safety testing and how we've got scientists and doctors and environmental organizers saying stop this because in terms of the effects of wireless radiation the science is in wireless radiation can lead to cancerous heart tumors uh, brain tumors uh, DNA damage wireless radiation is linked to infertility to autism Alzheimer's and more and guess what all the effects that I just listed those are some of the effects that are known according to the technology that's being seen today so what happens when we roll out the next technology, 5G? How much more powerful is 5G? How much more troublesome might it be? Well, we bring in now our NRS correspondent, Michelle Greenstein, who's been uh, working on this. I would imagine if those things are all potential, uh, potentially dangerous now, 5G can only, what, add to it, right? It could be more uh, dangerous, right? Yeah, that's exactly the question to be asking because it's not just faster internet. Right now with 4G and LTE, which is a part of that, we have about a 50 millisecond delay. 5G is going to bring us about a one millisecond delay. So you and I are not going to notice that technological difference, right? But what this means is that machines will be communicating with, e with each other quite seamlessly. And 5G is going to be the platform. It's going to be the infrastructure for all of this smart grid technology, the internet of things, right? We're going to be, have integrated smart homes with all of our devices connected. That means you can press a touch screen on your refrigerator and order more coffee or set the mood lighting or start playing some music. And we're told that things like smart driving cars are going to lead to less accidents or that smart meters are going to give utilities and customers more data, more information so we can avoid blackouts and things like that. But of course, all this more data from a health perspective, means more disease because these devices are constantly pulsing with radiation. Pulsing with radiation. I would think that if someone had come and said, we are going to develop this omnipresent system that's going to surround us with this stuff, that's going to be pulsing uh, radiation everywhere, somewhere along the line, somebody would have asked, well, hold on a minute, let's run this by the experts first and make sure we're all going to be safe. So Surely. how do we get to this point? Well, I think the really important question to ask is how can we protect ourselves against this wireless radiation? Yeah. And I actually spoke to Cece Doucette. She's the founder of an international nonprofit called Wireless Education. And I asked her, what we can do to protect ourselves. Let's see what she said. Okay. Assess what you have in your own possession that you can control. For example, in my home, we have completely hardwired all of our technology. My computers run a lot faster. They're certainly more safe because we don't have any radio frequency exposures. A lot of our technology appears to be hardwired, but you have to take it one step further and also go into your settings and turn off all the antennas. You can buy a little adapter to hardwire most of your cell phones, and that just means plug it into your router using an Ethernet cable, and then just put a little adapter on that will allow you to plug directly into your device. But plugging it in does not automatically disable those antennas. So you just simply go into settings, identify all the antennas. One cell phone may have five or six separate antennas. There could be one for cellular, one for data, one for Bluetooth, one for Wi-Fi, one for locator, and by now the industry is using us as their network, so there could be an additional one for a hotspot. Turn the 
them all off and hit save and you will have nice, safe technology. Hmm. So she's speaking from a personal perspective, right? We should make sure that as many of our de devices as possible should be hardwired. But the issue with 5G is that it will be impossible to walk outside without exposing yourself to this radiation because right. these small cell towers are going to be everywhere. Now, Rick, you asked how we got here. We got here because the FCC, the organization that is supposedly supposed mm. to be regulating the wireless industry, has been completely captured by the wireless industry itself. Mm -hmm. We know that the so-called public servants or our representatives and all these government entities have really been captured captured by the wireless industry and that's what happens with when any industry gets so big that it can afford to use a government body enamored and other ways I imagine as well right they're also enamored because the industry has been successful in hiding the health risks by the way uh, we're down to 30 seconds on this segment but I just wanted to ask we should maybe maybe we should do a segment on the loss of privacy the uh, surveillance issue regarding absolutely this. Can we 5g means constant surveillance with the ultimate goal being a network of things with every single thing on the planet connected to this network and that's why you're seeing things like the Washington's technological war on China because China is way ahead of us in terms of 5g and of course the US wants their hands on that surveillance infrastructure so it sounds like I sold you into doing another segment on this oh no now I have to do that <laughs> Michelle Greenstein thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>